The 81717 made by Metro Vagonmash is probably the most iconic and widespread metro car in the world. From its iconic blue tones of color, to its unique grill with multiple lights on it, all the way to it being a workhorse metro car in pretty much all Soviet metropolises, today we will be looking at its history and the cities it serves. My name is The Transit Diaries, and I like to make YouTube videos about metros and trains, as well as public transport systems all around the world, but I specialize in the post-Soviet world. How about we dive into today's video, talking about the history of the world's most iconic metro car, the 81-717-14. To understand why this metro car is in almost every Soviet metro system, we have to understand how it came to be. Picture this, it's the 1970s. You live in your sleeping box with the rest of your family that has no food. <laughs> and all of this is because your local metro system is being served by the old E-series metro cars, which are not fast enough. So. You cannot get to your factory job fast enough, and then you are late to the bread lines and you can't get your family food. And the reason why these metro trains were slow was because the traction motors were very weak, and the weight of the cars were emphasized on energy conservation, so the acceleration was pretty subpar. And because of the slow acceleration, you couldn't run trains at a high frequency, which led to overcrowding and slow and infrequent service. For this new metro car, they had to tackle all of the problems that the E-Series had. So they focused on three fields of solutions. Number one was to reduce the weight of the car bodies, as the current ones were pretty heavy, which led to weak acceleration. The next was to apply pulse voltage regulation with the excitation of traction motors. So they needed to make the traction motors stronger for higher acceleration and top speed, which in turn could lead to better headways or frequencies on trains, which would lead to less crowding and a generally more pleasant commuting experience. After the team thought they created all of their solutions, in 1973, they went to the Matishi machine building plant. This team of engineers were led under the leadership of A.G. Akimov, who was the Matishi machine building plant's lead designer. Akimov then proceeded to design three prototypes of the concept trains, which were named the I-Series. About a year after the designs were released, the first ever prototype of these I-Series trains were manufactured in 1974, and it was a huge change from any other sets, especially the Moscow Metro sets, which was going to be the first city to receive new trains, as they were the biggest city in the USSR and needed new trains fast. Just to note a few of the changes compared to the E-Series sets, you can definitely see the improvements which were made. The E-Series sets produced 72 kilowatts, and these prototype sets produced 90, and which would later be turned to 100 kilowatts. Then, they also switched up the material of the cars, which was now aluminium alloy, and this reduced the tear mass of the cars by over 2 tons, and this means that it was lighter, and the motors were stronger, so there were so many new changes. But wait, there's more. The passenger experience would also be improved with new lighting and more space. The way that they added more space to the metro cars without physically making the metro cars bigger was that they added driver cabs only to the ends of the train. As in previous metro trains, every single car had a cab, which led to quite inefficient management of space. Despite its advantages, the new metro trains had some disadvantages, and these disadvantages were major, almost career ending for the 81 717. The major issue was, because it was so good, it had to have many different features to it which were unique compared to the current trains of the Soviet metro systems. 
According from reports at the time, it said that the cars were too complex to be manufactured. So even though some working prototypes were created, production of the Yerge 3 and EOM 508T subseries still continued. Also because it was cheaper to manufacture. But Metro Vagonmarsh still kept working away to create an efficient version of this prototype Metro car. In the early 1970s, Metro Vagonmarsh factory was working on the prototype Metro car, but they also had a different trailer car type, which was based on a Yerge 2 subseries, which was never ever built. The control cars, otherwise known as the power cars, were also based on the Yerge 2 subseries, but to modify it and make it sufficient for the current Metro systems, they modified the front end as well as the driver controls. And after these modifications were made, that was when these cars were famously named the 81717 and the 81714. And then after a few years of experimenting and modifying, these cars were pretty much ready for service in the Soviet Union. Besides an issue with the uh, aluminium production and tweaking in many different areas due to metals around the Soviet Union, production was going well. And when production started, a couple of new metro networks opened, such as Toshkent and Kharkiv, as well as some other metro systems, and they were in dire need of new metro cars, which led to the i-series becoming a sort of staple in the metro systems, since all these new cities needed new metro cars, the 81 series was the one that was being produced, so they were given the 81 series. Now the reason why this metro train is so famous is because it was delivered to every single metro network in the Soviet Union, and not only the Soviet Union, but also every single Warsaw Pact country that had a metro system. But the first ever city to receive these trains were, of course, the Moscow Metro, which tested the prototypes between 1976 and 77. And in 1977, it had placed orders for new trains, and the first ever trains ran in 1978 on the Circle Line of the Moscow Metro. The legacy of the 81-717 continued all the way until 2010, when the last set was produced. The 81-717 served all the cities of the Soviet Union at a max speed of 90 km per hour, which is very fast. Now, allow me to read all of the cities which it served. <gasps> Baku, Budapest, Dnipro, Kharkiv, Kyiv, Minsk, Moscow, Nizhny Novgorod, Novosibirsk, Prague, St. Petersburg, Samara, Sofia, Toshkent, Tbilisi, Warsaw, Yekaterinburg, and Yerevan. Even though the 81-717-14's legacy may basically be over with all the modernizations it's had and all the replacements that are happening in all the cities, it will still remain a beloved metro car in commuters and rail fans' hearts forever. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Let me know what you want me to make in the comments, and let me know what you thought of this video. As for now, I'm The Transit Diaries, and as always, stay tuned for more.